Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at updating our rooted Pixel 4 or Pixel 4 XL uh, using the OTA that we get through our phone. It kind of looks like this when we check for an update. This one is to the December security update and also includes a few feature uh, enhancements as well. So right now we'll be using Magisk Manager to take the OTA from our phone without the need of a computer pretty much. And for those who have followed my Pixel 4 root video, and pretty much that's probably the only way to root the Pixel 4 by using Magisk Manager to patch the stock boot image that we get from the factory image uh, in order to install Magisk without a recovery. So because we've done that, Magisk actually didn't make a backup of the stock boot image into the location that it usually finds those backups in. For example, I'm trying to take this OTA update here and it says installation problem. That usually means our device doesn't kind of meet the requirements of having an authentic or an original uh, software or firmware there. Obviously, we've modified the boot image or the boot partition to install Magisk. So we need to get rid of that, right? So usually the procedure would be to go into Magisk Manager, tap on uninstall, and then tap on restore images so we can take the OTA. But down here it says stock backup does not exist. Now that's the problem we get because we chose to install Magisk by patching and selecting a boot image. When it does that, it can't copy the backup to its usual location, even though it says it makes the backup of the stock boot image. So in order to upgrade, we need to make our own backup, which is quite easy. So there are only a few things that we need to download and one of them you should already have. So let's head over to our computer to briefly discuss what we're going to do here. So reading this issue on GitHub, on the Magisk repo, number 1870, it describes the stock back backup not existing on a Pixel 3 that was rooted using the uh, boot image patch method. And they kind of want a way to supply their own stock uh, boot image or backup. So down here, we've actually got a helpful comment here by Raycon. And pretty much it tells us, or they tell us that where the stock boot image backup is supposed to be located, which is in data, and also where the configuration is that Magisk holds the name or the hash, of the backup that it made originally. So we can use this information in order to force Magisk to use our own backup. And to do that, of course, we'll need the factory image that you should already have when you rooted your Pixel 4. So I would actually use the same one because you need the boot image to match or you should have the boot image match your current build of Android. So if we go over back to our phone real quick, you can see that my version of Android is noted here when you scroll down into the expanded quick settings. Uh, it starts with QDA or 1A and ends in 007.A3. So remember that. And when we go into and find our factory image for the Pixel 4, for example, you can see that mine is located here and that was in the November update. So here it is, QD1A 007A3. So you should probably already have this or a factory image that you downloaded before. But if not, just grab the one that matches your current build of Android. So you should only have to do this once and you should be able to take OTAs afterwards without any other hassles. And the other thing is you'll need a file manager that is able to access your root partition. And I currently use Me Explorer. You can grab that off XDA and I'll leave a link to it down below. And that's the file manager I'll be using in this video. So uh, if you wanna follow along, grab that as well. And so once you have your file manager installed and the factory image downloaded, all you need to do is open up the factory image and once again, if you've rooted your phone quite recently, you should already have the stock boot image extracted outside. So I'm just going to do that now. I'm going to go into the folder. I'm going to go inside the image zip file. This is where all our individual images are located. So I'm going to wait for this to extract. And then I'm going to take the stock boot image from inside this image zip file outside, and then we'll copy it to our phone. Okay, here is the stock boot image. So I'm going to drag that outside just like so. And there it is, only 65 megabytes. We can close the zip file there and we need to connect our phone via USB and I've already done that. And what we need to do is copy the boot image that's on our computer onto our phone. So let's change the device to transfer files, file transfer, open up the internal storage and you should see that I already have the boot image here from when I rooted my phone, but that's all right. Let's just drag it over again and replace it and we'll follow uh, this guide here, these steps in order to allow Magisk to restore those images. Okay, so let's get started. So I presume that you have a file explorer that can do all sorts of things. Uh, the main thing is that we need to compress our backup. 
which is probably the most difficult part because I'm not sure the capabilities of other bar managers. But with the Mix Explorer, all you have to do are a few things. So first up, you need to go into the settings of Mix Explorer, and then you need to go to more settings and you need to tap on allow root. Make sure this checkbox is checked. Once you have that, we can go back and let's start off by finding the root image, which is just in our internal storage. We're going to select it by tapping it on the icon and then tap on the three dots up here and then tap on archive. Now it should say added to the task list, tap on the task list icon and then tap on archive. But let's change it to, uh, it should say zip by default. You need to change the selection to gzip. And I guess we might as well name it to what it's supposed to be. So it's supposed to look like this. So just name the same thing as I do here. So let's type in stock underscore boot underscore. This is the hash value. Let's just make this zero. And then we'll type in dot IMG. Okay, make sure it's not a capital I, IMG, like so. And it should automatically end in GZ. So don't type that in. Tap on OK. And that'll start compressing our image. And that's the uh, resulting file name. And you'll see that it is right here, stock underscore boot underscore zero dot IMG dot GZ. So we need to copy that. So let's select that and tap on the copy icon up here. Let's go over to the root storage. And at this point, you might be asked to grant uh, me Explorer root access. Go ahead and do that. And now let's head over to the data folder, tap on this, and then tap on the task list icon again, and then tap on the copy one file task. So that will copy our archive of compressed stock boot image to our data folder, which is good. And the next thing we need to do, let's go back one and we'll need to go into the SBIN folder. So let's go down to SBIN and let's go to dot magisk. And dot magisk is usually a hidden folder. So you actually need to go down to the views icon here next to the search icon, tap on that and then tap on options. And then I want you to check show hidden globally. Make sure that checkbox is enabled. And you might need to pull down to refresh these folders and you should be able to see the hidden dot magisk folder. Tap on that. Once you can see it, tap on config and open it up as a text file. And I'm going to use the code editor that is built into me Explorer. And what we'll do here is change the SHA1 entry. So you can double tap on that to select the whole string. And then we're going to replace it with zero because that's the hash we named our backup. So once you've done that, Tap on save, we're done, and we can go back. And from here, we should be able to go into Magisk Manager. So tap on that, and we should be able to tap on uninstall, tap on restore images. And this time, you can see it restore our stock boot image. And it should say restoration done. And this is when you can pretty much take the OTA update. Now, I highly recommend uh, doing a few more things before we do our OTA update. First up is to go into modules and make sure you disable or uninstall any modules that might conflict with a new update. Things like exposed are, I guess, quite volatile, especially exposed modules as well. So to play it safe, I recommend that you disable your ed exposed or exposed module and potentially any other modules that modify system files. Now, one thing to note is that the Active Edge mod is okay because it disables itself if it doesn't match the current version of Android, which is good. And the only other thing that I would recommend that you do also is enable USB debugging. This can be helpful if you end up in a boot loop after installing modules and you'll be able to uninstall all your modules uh, without the need of resetting or using a custom recovery. So that's pretty awesome. So I recommend enabling USB debugging, which I already have. And uh, I did talk about that in my rooting video. But anyways, that's uh, not exactly related to this video. So let's go back to the settings now and we'll go into the uh, system update section. And now if you tap on try again, give it a sec to prepare the system update and also give it a moment to download it if it hasn't already done so. And this time it should go through without a hitch. So I'm going to let this do its thing now since we should be able to, I guess, uh, install the update. And before we restart, so don't restart your phone when the update is complete, you need to reinstall Magisk. That way we won't lose root access and you'll pretty much be able to keep all your modules as well. So I'll fast forward this spinning until we get to the next screen where we'll probably confirm the update. Okay, here it says installation pause because we are using the device. That doesn't matter. Let's tap on resume and it'll download and install the update hopefully. And we'll give this a second because it does take a while. So leave your device alone if you want or use it if you want to. 
and it should prompt you when it's ready to install. But remember, do not restart your phone just yet. We need to reinstall Magisk. So I'll fast forward this until it's finished and we'll run through reinstalling Magisk on the opposite slot. Okay, so it's finally finished, uh, I guess, preparing the update and optimizing apps. That took a very long time. And you can see now that we can restart our device. But before we do that, let's head back over to Magisk Manager, go back to the main menu, and let's tap on Install. This is so we can install uh, to the inactive slot after we kind of download and install the OTA. So tap on this last option here to install to an active slot after OTA. And uh, this means uh, your device will be forced to boot into the current inactive slot after a reboot. Okay, that is fine because we are ready to restart as we saw before in the OTA update screen. So once we're sure, let's tap on OK and it'll now start to do its thing. There we go. So I'm just having a look at the log here and we should be good to go. So let's restart and see that our phone turns on, rooted and updated as well. Okay, so we're booted up now and we don't have to finish any updates because the system took care of that before we rebooted. And let's see where we are. Let's check our build number. I guess it still finishes a system update. And we are on the other build number. And if we just quickly have a look at our computer here, we can see that that build number correlates to this version of the December security update. So we know we're updated, but are we still rooted? And if we open up Magisk Manager, yes, we are, which is great. And all our modules should be up to date and all good. I will need to update the Active Edge mod. Uh, but that is fine. You can see I can do that right away. And Magisk, and I'm not focused on my phone, but anyways, that's how you can update your phone from after rooting your phone using the boot image patch method. Uh, so this was pretty simple in my mind, but I still prefer using the factory images directly and just doing a quick patch of the boot image there because waiting for that, the update to optimize all the apps took a pretty long time uh, but we did have to do that initial first step of inserting our own stock boot image backup. So that did take a little bit of time, but hopefully after this, we should be able to take any other OTAs from this day forward without having to uh, keep adding our own boot image backup. So that backup should still be there and we can, I guess, quickly have a look if it's still there because it's just located in the data folder inside our root folder. So you can see it's made one here uh, of the one that is actually on our phone, if that makes sense. So this was the one that we imported, the one with zero, uh, and now it should work as usual. So you can actually delete this file. Don't delete the other one, but delete the one that we named and manually moved over. But that should be all you need. And as you can see, we are still rooted and updated with no data loss. So if you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below in the comment section, or even better yet, Join us on Discord, it's much easier to keep track of conversations and to uh, send help and images and all that kind of good stuff. So thanks for watching guys, and as always, happy flashing.